Hello, my name is Corey Barlog, director of God of War. And if you have not played God of War, spoilers abound. Go away. Come back after you finish playing, and then I'll give you a little insight on how we made the game. All right, so we're here at uh, Tears Vault. This is the uh, right after you've gotten the the chisel from the stonemason's uh, level. Now you're stepping in to see how to head down to Tears Vault and get the Black Rune Stone. Wow! I can't believe we're setting foot in Tears Vault. Another one of these. So this is the little introduction to something you're gonna find out later. Adding a bit of mystery. Uh, there's a missing panel. What does this mean? Loved by everyone, including the giants. Other than me, he was the only one they gifted with their special sight. That's wonderful to actually have the time in in this experience to be able to set things up that aren't even relevant for eight hours, nine hours. This is a really great moment right here. Actually, come on. Let me show you how to the tables have turned and his son is gonna teach him something. Let me teach you something. This is definitely taken from when my son would point in the storybooks and have my wife read in Swedish and he kinda look at me and Come on, old man, learn. I know how to read. I know how to read. Just not this. Except he has other people read for him. Okay. So the runes represent a lot of different things. Some gods, some animals. And this whole scene wasn't originally in the game. Not that. We had changed a few structural points and lost a few areas and needed to fix a problem. And it turned out that this fix, yeah, yeah. to me, created one of the most powerful moments in the whole game. So I will always be open to these kinds of changes and understand that everything happens for a reason. And this this whole scene is just incredible. Nolan. Nolan North, man. He is just amazing. Has a little bit of that, like, Emperor with Luke. But this sort of realization, this kind of Atreus' moment to really show his family colors, you know, this idea that he is truly Kratos' son. But he's definitely not ready. Right? He's never been told that he's a god. So his body is still fighting all of this stuff. And that classic, like, Kratos rage pose coming out. Uh, it's just... So if you remember in the beginning of the game, rage mode was triggered the first time when uh, Baldur actually threatened the boy. Like, I'm going to go find out who you have hiding in that house. Kratos goes into rage mode. When his father's in danger, Atreus instinctively goes into rage mode. But he's just not able to do that. So then that fuels Kratos' rage mode even more. And it just has this great kind of mirror dynamic, you know, that how far Atreus has come, but how far he has to go. Huh. Something I don't know if people pick up on. Uh, but he stays in his rage mode until he actually picks his son up. So that he hasn't been able to calm himself down, and it is actually picking his son up. That's the thing that calms him. That puts the fires out. He's worried about him, but actually making the physical contact, the thing that was so hard for him throughout the game, that's what calms him down. It's the sort of knowing that he's he's able to do something. And now this, we had a, a to write a, a special sort of navigation for Kratos. At one point, it was just on a spline, and it just felt awkward and weird. Uh, and Jitrov was able to kind of really dig in and figure out a way to make it a bit more smooth. And when you come out here, the world has changed. You know, the, the, the red storm, as we're calling it, which is the epicenter right over their house, is off in the distance. And you kind of have this weird, almost bluish-gray haze everywhere. It's the world is reacting to this imbalance. The world is, is, is reacting to Loki being near death, right? And at this time, you don't know he's Loki. Spoilers! And at one point, my initial pitch for this was this was going to be the only time Kratos was going to be brave. This was where he was going to actually tell Atreus everything. He was going to unload it all because he had a captive audience who actually wasn't going to judge him or speak back. Um, but then Mimir was there, 
So I realized, like, you know what? I don't think this is very good. And the writers kind of pushed back on this one, and they were right. Um, this was the time to be silent. This was the time to force the player to look at the unconscious body of Atreus, you know, and have a little bit of conversation from Mimir. Atreus Forest is a blind spot for him. This is our smartest move. And if anyone can heal him, it's hard. And it was very intentional to draw this out. From the beginning, I wanted this sequence to have that little itch in the back of your head to go, wait a minute, what's going on here? And then when you get to Freya, when you start thinking, wait a minute, did he just say, am I going where I think he says he's going? Oh, wait, is that happening? And then you just build up that anticipation. And I felt very strongly that we could carry this to 15 or 20 minutes and really build it up to appreciate the crescendo of that moment to actually get the blades. A lot of people had said, you know, let's just fast travel. This takes too long. It's boring. And, you know, at the time, it, they were right. It's just gray box. And, you know, it did take a long time to boat, and there was nothing to look at. There was no music. It was very aggravating. And I think it, you know, is a testament to their faith that I kept saying, no, 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 no. We are not doing that. I love this little extra animation that they did. Just resetting Atreus. His head just collapsing on his shoulders. And then resetting here. And now you're forced to just look at like he is doing everything he can to steal himself. Somebody just called the seven. Like he is not an uh, effusive, you know, emoter. But this right here, this kind of... He is... He can't fight this. He can't stab it. He can't defeat it. He simply has to figure out the, the logical, smart move out of this. And the emotions that he's trying to suppress right here because of what he's grown up the way he's grown up is just you know he's like a caged animal at this point he doesn't know how to deal with it it was awesome that we were able to get a lot of that across I think it's so intentional that every step you know we're not letting you sprint we're, 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 we're putting you in this walk and we're forcing you to deal with this there's Potentially, we had hooked a tiny bit of agitation from the player, and that agitation is desired. We want you to feel tense, right? And feel a little bit like Kratos. Open the door. We need your I love her line response. Woman, do you hear me? It is urgent. I'm still a god. Go away. <laughs> the boy has fallen ill. Freya! Oh, I love her character. It's so good. This was an early on scene two. We shot this when we didn't have everything fully worked out as far as the spaces and then had to reshoot a little bit to ensure that we got everything correct. But they were uh, utter professionals in this sequence and nailed the performance. Sonny, excellent at being passed out. To him. Will you help me? One thing that everybody was worried about was the fact that you could switch There's armors. So that in every animation or every cinematic, you could have all these different armor pieces and they felt it was going to be distracting. But I personally thought it was great that it felt like when I see that in the game, when I actually play a game and I've made all these choices and then I'm in these story moments and I see the choices reflected on my character, it's awesome. That's part of the magic of games. realms can create a blaze. As for the dead, your frost axe will be useless. You'll need to find something else. Then I must return home. Deep up past, I swore, would stay buried. It's interesting because everybody has matter. secrets, right? She's advising him, past, care about your son, focus on him, don't worry about the secrets of the past. But I mean, she doesn't go anywhere without her sword. She can't draw it. She this can't use it. Odin has prevented that, but she still maintains there, not the veneer, the, the secret. Cross the bridge of the it's like everybody's got something that they're hiding. Uh, Boy. Hey, Mille. You must hurry. Through my garden, there's a path leading to my boat. Take it. Return home. Dig up your past. Do whatever you And what's interesting, she's wearing a necklace that actually says Balder in runes. So... Early on when you meet her, if somebody is eagle-eyed and they make a screenshot, they're actually going to be able to see that. We had a physical uh, necklace for for the Witch of the Woods uh, made for PSX. And we are all so busy. No. We didn't realize that the necklace said right. Balder on it until we were standing no looking at it at PSX and realizing if somebody takes a photo of this and goes home and translates it, they're going to see that the Witch's necklace says Balder. 
Uh, and nobody noticed. It was like Kojima wearing the Death Stranding shirt before he announced Death Stranding. Super meta and nobody caught on. I was very thankful for that. Because that was a big mess up on my part. So now this is another one where at this point people were like, all right, it's been, you know, we did a cinematic, we did all these other things. Maybe we should just warp him there. I'm like, no, 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 no. This boat ride is so important for his development. It was like, you take Freya's magical boat, and the boat just knows where to go. It takes you off, and the storm begins... And as you're getting closer, you've already seen the indications of the red storm, and now you're going to go into the heart of the storm, right? And this is to really represent what's going on inside of Kratos. This is a physical, external representation of the storm that has been going on inside of him forever, right? And this moment, everything about this moment is about a pivotal character shift for Kratos. His entire life, the entirety of the seven uh, games that he's been in previously has been spent blaming other people for his problems, taking almost no responsibility for anything that he's done. In fact, the only acknowledgement of it is saying, I will do things for you if you erase the horrible things that I've done, the stupid decisions that I've made, which only further served to bond him in servitude to the gods. Like his inability to accept and take responsibility is the weight that has held him down for so long. And that little smug smile from Athena, too. He knows what he has to do, and it's like, I don't think he's ready even now. Like, in this moment, for me, he's still 80, 90% of the way there. He hasn't fully gotten there. And it isn't until she taunts him that he really realizes what he is who he is and that the only way the only way he is ever going to move forward is if he simply accepts his faults right i mean that's a, for all of us that's the biggest thing is instead of denying uh, our faults instead of pretending they don't exist is kind of accepting it and desiring to either change or simply live with these things that we don't like about ourselves There was a whole plan to have full sequences of Hellwalkers fighting other creatures. There's a great Hellwalker up on the cliff just looking down at you. It's kind of creepy. Saying nothing, doing nothing, just staring right at you. And there was going to be, you know, animals and uh, creatures running around everywhere. And just we ran out of budget and time. But I think it's actually better. Again, that's another one of those things where the limitations made it better. It wasn't overwhelming. You're taking all this in. It is the moments of quiet, right? Which is very rare for him. That he's doing nothing. He can't do anything but sit and wait for this boat to deliver him to the front of his house. It's a nice little, you know, sort of callback to the beginning of the game when he and his son were coming in the same path at a very different meeting. And at the beginning of the game when uh, you're about to set off on the journey, we do a little pause of the camera and look underneath the the house to acknowledge that the blades are there underneath the house. It's a little bit of a hint, and if you don't know what you're looking for, you wouldn't notice it. But, you know, anytime we're going to have a reveal like this, a little surprise, I always want to have a couple of opportunities to show that, hey, that might be coming. And if you're really paying attention. And this whole idea is kind of the throwback to classic God of War, where every time you would get a new uh, weapon, magical power, any sort of new mechanic, we would give you the before and after. We'd give you the opportunity to experience before you had it, fighting a wave of enemies, and then after you got it, we would throw a bunch of enemies at you so you could really see, like, wow, that's changed. Uh, the way I interact with characters is so different. So this also shows you that these enemies are fairly impervious to the axe, trying to use the axe directly on them causes it to bounce off and the duration of time it takes to take them out is much higher when you get the blades and come back out you just you know hot knife through warm, uh, through butter right it's just absolutely easy I really like when Mimir gives you directions on where the enemies are there was a, a point in the game 
where Mimir was not going to be hanging from the belt. Um, he was going to be in a bag because everybody thought it would be silly. Or not everybody, but many people thought it would be silly if there was a head hanging off the belt. And I kind of had to use a little bit of inception and some social engineering over time to give people comfort with the idea that, hey, he's going to be hanging on the belt and he's going to be talking the whole time. Uh, they said, I worry that's going to get annoying. And I was like, no, if we cast this guy right, if we write him right, it's going to be great. It'll be unusual, it'll be different, it won't feel exactly like previous God of Wars, but it'll have that kind of interesting dynamic that I think great sort of fantasy films have had. And this is just no different. This was a really, really emotional scene for Chris. Uh... I didn't know at the time how dark it was going to be, so we really couldn't see a lot of what he was doing. But, I mean, you can feel it in what he's saying. He went to he went to a really uh, dark place to get here. And I just have been so in awe of his performance throughout this entire thing. But this moment, I just go up and give him a hug after one of the takes. Because uh, I asked him to do it like four times. We had to pull a little trick where whatever armor you have on, we have to kind of turn it off at certain points so that we can get some of these. There's a few scenes where we have to do that. Breaks a little bit of the the reality. You know, if you're paying really close attention, it's a little weird, but most people we found through the playtest did not notice it. Although finally, because the resolution is a lot higher on the PlayStation 4, everybody notices the whole... There's chains on it, and then he puts it on his back, and then the chains are connected to his hands, which was part of the franchise from the beginning, the kind of magical, like, they're connected to his arm, then he puts them on his back, and they're not connected to his arm anymore. It was a weird sort of uh, break of the illusion, I think, for everybody. Oh. And this is Carol Rougier as Athena, the original Athena. I love her performance, her voice. She is Pretend wonderful. To be everything you are not. Teacher, husband. There it is, father. the father. That's the one that gets him. It's the one thing he cares about. That's where he realizes truth you will never escape. he is a monster. You cannot change. You will always be a monster. I know. But I am your monster no longer. Such an empowering moment. That feeling of like, you haven't shed everything from the past, but at least you've accepted it. You've accepted that you are imperfect. And you've done a lot of bad stuff, and that begins the path for real change for him. Obviously, he goes and kills a bunch of creatures right after that, but... From a gameplay perspective, this puts you into that moment of like, all right, that is the classic heroic moment. You know, the indie putting the whip on. And I feel like reaching this point was satisfying because of the journey that it took to get there. It needed to take 15 to 20 minutes. If we had rushed it to get there, I feel like most people wouldn't have really absorbed what was happening. Part of it is this sort of building of the tension and that disbelief. I mean, you want it to be long enough that you're like, oh, they're probably not doing that. No way, they're doing that. And this, this, is, this is a testament to every single member of the team bringing something to the table to realize this long moment. I mean, we called these, uh, you know, uh, key level beats. That was our development name. And we had tons of these key level beats throughout. And there was these little strike teams that we would put together to try to realize each one of them. And some of them were easier than others, but this one, I think, presented an incredible challenge because it required so many people to come together and come up with, you know, unorthodox solutions uh, or time-consuming solutions to try to realize it to its fullest extent. It was a sight to behold to go from the really crude, blocked-out version to actually get to the point where even members of our own team when they were playing it for the first time were just like giddy, right? Which reminded me 
in this moment to see some of the team members excited when I was on the show floor uh, in E3 2004 maybe when we had a demo of God of War 1 and I was watching people come up to the station pick it up and just start cutting through a bunch of skellies and just having an amazing amazing time it was nice to actually see that from members of our own team this is where you realize there was a, a hidden gateway in your front yard the whole time uh, covered in uh, vines these Helheim vines that actually uh, are preventing you from accessing it so without the blades you would have never been able to open this magical door so I think that's just so cool well there you have it a little glimpse behind the scenes thank you everybody for watching and thank you everybody for playing for the players